two, one, and we are live. Hello again, guys. Welcome to our broadcast. Let's welcome here our friend Marcelo, my partner that made it back. So hello there, Marcelo. Hey, hello, everyone. And let's welcome our guest, the amazing artist we have been waiting for, Ariel Middle. How is everything going, Ariel? Hello, hi, hi to everyone, and thanks for watching. And thanks for inviting me. Well, thanks to you, man. We do really enjoy your artwork and your visionary art style that got a couple of mixes between uh, Sim Life, cartoon, and comics, and the the old classic style. So we are going to start first before we start the in the questions we sent you. We're going to start with unscripted questions. So okay. the first question is: What is your secret origin? <laughs> My secret <laughs> audience. Uh, <Yeah. laughs> I, I don't know, really. Well, I, I, since I can remember, I, I always liked drawing. Um, actually, in this, I have said this in previous interviews, the, one of the first memories I have was as a, as a toddler uh, with some cranes and like doing some lines on the wall. So I don't know. I mean, as far as I have memory, I, I wanted to do something creative, either in movies or or or, or comics. When I uh, first found comics, I was I was very struck by the art. I look. I remember looking at maybe John Romita Senior and some Jack Kirby reprinted issues, and uh, I mean, I, I fell in love with the medium. Uh, and I think that that's it. That would be my secret origins. That's because cool. that the real secret origins I cannot tell you because I would have to then kill you. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Don't care, we are fine. We are Very fine. Good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> okay, so, so the next question is: Do you like an artist? What are your weapons of choice uh, regarding materials? <clears throat> regarding materials, well, I think it depends because uh, I, uh, as a comic book, uh, book, uh, comic book artist, uh, I have had to to move into digital art, and 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 what I loved using, I I loved using my my iPad and uh, and the Apple Pen. So the Apple Pencil. But <clears throat> before that, I would work traditionally, and I loved using the, I don't know the translation, the stylographo. Oh, yes, 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 yes. It's yeah. like a, no, no, no. Like no, a no, liner. The, portaminas, portaminas. Oh, yeah. You know, but. Mechanical pencil, but uh, it, kind of that. Mechanical thing. pencil, exact. That is the one, yeah, Mecha mechanical pencil. But the, I mean, the really thin one, uh -huh. I really enjoyed uh, using that. And uh, those would be my, my, my weapons of choice. I don't do like a lot, a lot of uh, different uh, um, tools. Uh, but when I'm doing like, because I also like to do figurative art to draw light from models, then it would uh -huh. be probably graphite, graphite or I'm, I'm maybe charcoal, but I'm not very good at it yet, so. That's cool. <clears throat> That's yeah. fine. So every artist or writer have a secret identity. For me, I like to cook and love to play sports, while Marcelo lo loves to sing and do music. So what's your secret identity? <clears throat> mm, give me other stuff that, like, that I like to do. Mm. Yes, yeah, so apart from drawing, uh, yes. Well, probably most of the things I, I like to do are related to to art, uh, to movies. Uh, but I would say probably uh, probably uh, some stuff related to 
um, maybe a little bit of uh, philosophy and probably I don't want to say Buddhism, but stuff like that, you know. Ah, I'm I interested like in meditation mm -hmm. and, and, and to know a little bit more about those cultures. And actually, in general, I all I love uh, ancient cultures. I love, uh, you know, the, the, the Greek art, uh, uh, the, the mythologies. Uh, ah, I, yes. I like that stuff. I, I, I'm not an expert, but I, you know, like a little bit of all of that. I like to look in, into that. Yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I like to I read that, like, about that. I also like traveling when, when I can. Ah, yes. What, uh, where do you travel? Well, <clears throat> uh, it's funny because I, five years ago, I didn't, much, didn't do much traveling. But after, after that, I began to, to travel. So I've been to uh, probably a lot of places in, or, or main places in, in Europe. I've been to Greece. I've been to... Oh. Actually, I've been to Turkey, I've been to Germany, to Switzerland, to a little bit of Austria, uh, a little bit of, uh, well, Paris, just mm -hmm. quickly, and um, mainly those places. Yeah. Well, that's very nice. That's very nice. So yeah, I've been, I like to I've travel been, too. Uh, able to, to do a few, few travels, so yeah. That's and it. I want to do more. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> so, yeah. Okay, so the next question, you like a, a, like an artist, what challenges has you faced? Do you hear me? <clears throat> Ariel? So yeah, I think it, that, that's, I think that the screen froze. Can you guys hear yes, me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear you now. Oh, okay. He's going to get back. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, our Don't. job really comes with traveling. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what are the challenges to, that you face as an artist? Well, <clears throat> I think there are different kinds of challenges because one, some would be regarding the... <clears throat> progress as an artist you know trying to be better to to improve uh, to to correct uh, whatever stuff i'm do doing wrong and uh and learning more uh, how to do better storytelling or better anatomy whatever and the other challenges are you know uh, uh to 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 get work and be out there because this this is a different world right now with all of, of the social media so it's i i i've never been out of work much uh luckily I, I i most of well up to this point i always have to something to do however uh, i think that sometimes people artists are being forced to stay relevant in in social media in order to get work so that's i like another challenge you know Yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is not uh, related on how good you are, but how how uh, good you are at selling your work, you know? Oh, yeah, marketing. Presenting your work, yeah, and, and being out there. And sometimes even, even uh, how likable you are uh, mm -hmm. as a person influences how many followers you have and all that, you know? So it's oh, yes. a, I think it's a different scheme that 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 the uh, the one that that was like twenty or or fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the social media now is as another major to the artist or than the experience or the skills that he have. He must have some yeah, kind of exactly. followers and likes so he can be working here and there. Some companies do like to hire artists with followers and fans other than experienced and skilled artists. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I'm not saying that the ones that they hire are not good. They are good. But sometimes there are better artists out, out there and uh, and they, they go with the ones that have more, more followers. Mm. 
That's true. That's so true. <laughs> well, so are you a villain or a superhero? Definitely a superhero. What type of superhero? If you if you can invent something. Uh, probably like Superman. <laughs> oh, or, that's cool. Or Goku. <laughs> <laughs> oh Goku, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which is, which is gonna be your weakness in case if you were Superman? I mean I I, I cannot tell you. Ah I see <laughs> so this, this is a secret. <laughs> yeah. That's very interesting. Yes, very clever. <laughs> exactly. So probably so pro I think Superman if he had known what he would have done as soon as he had some, like he was a teenager or something like that, yeah. he would have found every kryptonite uh, uh, rock in, on the planet and he would have thrown it to the, to space. That's, that's you know? true. That's true. <laughs> I yeah, actually, that's true. I don't know why he hasn't done that yet. <laughs> that's true, in, in that's the comics. true. Yeah, that's true. because that way you don't have a, a weakness, you know? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, so the next question, Marcelo. Okay, let me hear. <clears throat> okay, so how did you start your career? <clears throat> well, actually, to, to make a long story short, because it is a long story, I was trying to get into comics back in the late 90s, and... Um, for some reasons, I, that wasn't able to, to happen. Uh, well, it didn't happen. But I mean, I, I think I got close. Actually, some editors from, from Marvel and DC told me that you are close, but I was going to San Diego Comic Con at the time and all that. But then, mm -hmm. like people say, life, life, life happened. So I had to take another route. Mm -hmm. And in 2012, I got back into trying to get into comics. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing uh, web design and a, a little bit of illustration on the side uh, <clears throat> for advertising and all that. And uh, when I when I decided to get back back into trying to get into comics, mm -hmm. I started doing some samples. I got um, I got some work for an Indian company. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, that work never saw the light of day. But there, there I, I met uh, Ron Mars, uh, the writer. So from there, I got called by Cenescope. I was f with them for, for a year. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then after that, uh, I got in contact again with Ron Mars, and, and I went to work with him on, on, the, <clears throat> on John Carter for Dynamite. So I started wow. up with Cenescope. And uh, I, well, that's how I started. Then I moved uh, to Dynamite, which, which was like, which is a bigger company. And from mm -hmm. there, well, I've done a lot of stuff with Dynamite, so a, few, a little bit of all other stuff, and with many independent publishers. <clears throat> that's so cool. Amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, regarding to the topic we were talking about, we got a question from the audience here asking how should an artist be marketing his works and also be known to the community? <clears throat> well, that's a good question <laughs> because I'm still figure, figuring out that myself. Like, like I said, <clears throat> fortunately, I haven't really had, had, had struggle getting work. And most of the times when I finish a project, I either have the next project, project uh, waiting for me or I spend like maybe a week and then I have more work. So, <clears throat> and, and, and most of the times it's big projects or medium projects that are gonna keep me busy for a few months. So yeah, but what, <clears throat> what I'm seeing is that, uh, and I'm starting to do that, not because I need it at the time, but because I may need it in the future, is that you have to, in some way, <clears throat> gather a following, you know, of people, people who like your work, who follow you on Instagram, who follow you on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever. And uh, you have to nurture that. So those people are, are always asking for more 
or of your work, you know? And so that's what I'm seeing. It's not something that I've gotten too much into, but I'm, that I'm, I've been starting to do uh, <clears throat> to get my work more out there. Because funnily enough, some of my clients are like, I'm going to hire you. I love your work. And they hire me and all that. And then uh, when I talk about myself, well, maybe I probably done like 20 pages for them. And then they say, you, you work for, for Dynamite and you, you did this for them. And, and I was like, weren't you aware of that when you hired me? No, I just hired you because I like your work. And I was, okay, that's good. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's but, so but, nice. But of course, what I want also is to people to know who I am, to see my work, to know my, um, about my career, because I think it can be helpful. It hasn't That's been a necessity cool. for me, but I think it can be helpful in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> indeed, I totally agree with you. What titles do you do you got in Dynamite that you were drawing? <clears throat> yeah, for for Dynamite, I did uh, first a John Carter Warlord of Mars. They've done uh -huh. several like several runs of that one, but I did the one that uh, that was written by Ron Mars and Ian Edgerton. I know I don't think I'm pronouncing it right, but well, okay. So I did like eight issues for them. Then they canceled the time, the title of, of, of unfortunately. Then after that, I did I did China or or Tsina or Sena, however you pronounce it. Yes, uh, the Warrior Princess, and I did oh, almost. Cool. Yeah, almost four issues for them because I had some personal issues that I had to take care of. So I, I actually quit the title and they I were see. very understanding and all. And then I came back like, I don't know, some time later to do Agent 47, who, oh. which is uh, based on the character from the Hitman video, uh, video games. And I did six yeah. issues of that. Yeah, ah, so cool. So cool. So amazing. So very nice. We got another Thank question you. from the audience. What has been your favorite book you have worked on so far? <clears throat> well, that's a very difficult question because I've worked on so many things that I kind of, you know, and, and, and especially when you're on a title, like several issues, you kind of find, you fell, fall in love with, with it. Because when I started Agent 47, I got to be honest, I've never been a, a fan of the game. It's not that I don't like it. It's a, that I've never played it. So I cannot love something that I never played. Yeah. But when I started doing the comic, I, it was actually very challenging. And I wasn't like very happy. But that, that, that by the final issue I did, I was super happy with it. And I loved the character and I loved everything that, that was going on. So it's difficult to, to reply to that question with just one title. But I will say that, that I really, really liked uh, doing uh, John Carter. And I also really, really liked doing uh, it. And it was just uh, 24 pages that I did for Marvel. and. Uh, it was for a comic book that is not in their universe. There's, there's a division of Marvel that it's called Marvel Costume Comics, and they do comics for other people. So, for example, if a company wants eight pages of a comic uh, with um, to, to promote their product, uh, they can hire Marvel to do that, that division of Marvel. So I worked for that division. But, but it was a lot of fun, it, even though it wasn't Marvel, Marvel characters. Uh, it was a lot of fun because it was written by Fabian Nicieza. So it was like amazing for me. And I enjoyed doing that comic a lot because I, were, I was working with, uh, with him. I mean, I didn't communicate with him, but it was his script. So, uh, 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 and it was very well written. I mean, I, I love the style of that, uh, of that era of comics. Um, because I think they took into account more the visual side that, than they do now. But whatever, I loved uh, working with uh, Fabian is a script, so that's that stuck in my mind, and I would have to say those two titles. <clears throat> that's so cool. Yeah. <clears throat> 
So we're going to ask the next question, Marcelo. Yes, one second. Okay, so what is your influence map? What is kind of the artist that have influenced during your career? <clears throat> or are influencing right now? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, many, many artists. I, I like a lot of stuff. But <clears throat> it, what the, the artists that, that I liked for a long time and, and I always uh, uh, name them is uh, the three, the three uh, J's. Uh, John Lucema, ah. John Byrne, yes. and Jim Lee. So those oh, I, I are, have always been there since I, well, first probably John Buscema, but, but for a long time, maybe for 30 years, I've been a fan of those three, three artists and they're like, you know, like, whoa. So, <clears throat> but I do have a lot of other influences and uh, probably, uh, I don't know, Probably I I am also influenced by by illust uh, other illustrators that are not comic book artists so or uh -huh. or 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 kind of illustrations that uh, for many things that I that I've seen you know however if we're sticking with with comic book artists I would have to mention that I like Craig Capullo mm -hmm. I'm not directly influenced by him. I think I'm more influenced by stuff that he was influenced by, but I love his work. Uh, I love Ryan Otley. Uh, I love uh, Sean Murphy. Mm, I love uh, Oliver Coipel, uh, Stuart Imanem, and uh, <clears throat> Francis Lane in You. Yes, I mean, I, we can be here all night. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> probably there's people I'm not mentioning I'm forgetting, but that probably those are the main artists that that, that I really really love. Yes. <clears throat> so, when you got a chance to create a character from scratch for a comic book, maybe uh, uh, for a company or for the indie industry or for Kickstarter projects, how does the artist Ariel Middle sing sinks while creating this character or creature? Well, <clears throat> it, it basically depends on, on, on how much freedom I have because sometimes I, I mean, I've done character design for for many for many small publishers, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what they some of them tell you like they give you like a list of things that I, they want, and uh, and sometimes you don't have that much freedom, or you give them options that, that you think are better, and they, and most of the times they go like, oh, that's good, but I want what I told you first, so. Is um, what I do in those cases is that well, I try to to portray them what I'm being instructed to portray as best as I can. Probably trying to put a little bit of myself there when I can or, or when I'm being allowed to. Uh, but when I have a little bit more of freedom. I try to think of the character's personality mm -hmm. and then go from there, you know? And when it's something that's entirely mine, like the project that I'm that I'm promoting right now, that's, that's artists versus Butulo, that you guys can look it up on Facebook. Well, I I I I think differently because that I also create a personality. I also create the backstory and everything, not only the 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 appearance. And also, I'm mm -hmm. completely free to do the appearance however I like. You know, because when, when you're working for someone else, they tell, they may tell you you have a little bit of freedom, but this person has to look like this. This has to mm -hmm. be of this age, of this race, or whatever. But when I'm doing my my own characters, I'm completely free. <clears throat> so what I think is uh, like a concept. I have the concept of the story, 
and then and then I, I start thinking about what character characters I need and um, one uh, aspect of character design that's very important is that, that you want your characters to look different they shouldn't mm -hmm. look the same visually regardless of any uh, social idea that you have visually they have to look different because otherwise you have like a bunch of guys that look the same i i actually was looking at at, at a independent comic i'm not gonna say the name of course uh, just a few hours before uh, where they have like a bunch of four or five mercenaries that look look practically the same so you don't want to do that you you want to cre create uh, a if you're doing a team you you want to create a team when every, everybody looks in a very specific way. And uh, and also the, 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 that it has a something that makes them a little bit unique at the least. <clears throat> so that's how I think when I'm doing my, my own stuff. So, so uh, do you apply this with the comic scenes that you illustrate? Do you apply the same things that you just say when you just had a very standard script telling you that character A is talking to character B or holding him from the clothes or grabbing him from the neck. Do you apply this scene with, about your the freedoms that the writer or the editor gives to you? Well, yeah, it depends on, on, on what they allow you to do. What I what, what I really enjoyed about doing John Carter and about when when I say I was doing uh, that work for Marvel with uh, Fabian Isesa writing is that those writers think visually, so they know what the artist does, they know uh, what the artist has to do, so they write in a way that is easier for you to interpret it and maybe do some some adaptations. And uh, they they don't get in your way because sometimes the writer gets in the artist's way, so that you can. Yeah. I mean, I cannot do a a, a cool page that 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 that, that attracts a viewer that, that that makes a viewer wants want to read it because you know it's written in a way that is like um, like not not letting you do that too much. However. And uh, what I try to do is I try to, to, to talk to the writer when that happens, you know? And, uh, and I try to tell him, you know, it, it's, it's really better if you let me do this. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I think visually, and some writers don't think visually. So they want to write a, a fight, for example. But they write it in a way that, that, that sometimes... Uh, you come up with something better because mm -hmm. you capture movement in a different way that people who don't think visually, you know? That's true, that's true. So sometimes they write like, and then the person grabs the arm and does that, does this, and then does this, and you can see, and, and, and you're like, well, that's gonna be very boring if you, <laughs> if, and, and, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. Yeah, yes. and, and, and you have to talk to them, you know? It would be better if we do this and we do that because basically in those kind of things, the writer doesn't really need to explain much. The writer just needs to say, you know, you want I want this to kick ass or kick sorry. Kick, yes. Kick back, you know, <laughs> I want people to freak out. They, that, they, that's basically what the writer needs to say. They don't need to tell you that they do like this kind of kick or or that. Because that's your job. You you train for that. Yes, you know? Yes. They only yeah, need to tell you, know, I, I want it to look like a real kung fu fight. Uh, yes. If I don't know, if I don't know how a real kung fu fight, I go look at, at a video. And I have the information. Mm -hmm. That's uh -huh. it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, that's how I think when I'm when I'm doing a, a page. I read it, I try to imagine it. And sometimes I have to talk to the to the writer and editor. Luckily, there haven't been many cases when 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 I when I have had to forcibly do something that is not gonna be cool for the page. 
Fortunately, most of the, of the people that I've worked with are like uh, open or even or, or, or open of, enough to say, mm, well, okay, do it, okay, okay. And then they see it and they're like, oh, you know, that's actually cool. Yeah, of course. So, yeah. Well, that's awesome. That really helps. So, the next question, Marcelo. Okay, one second. Traditional or digital art working, what is the best for you and why at this moment? <clears throat> well, presently, digital, because it allows me to do more stuff in ways that it would take me more time, probably uh, traditionally. However, that's not saying that I like it more. I, I do like it. I enjoy drawing traditionally, I mean, digitally a lot. But I'll, I'll always love traditional art too. Mm. So in, in, in thinking of it professionally, I would say digitally. Digital. Yes, yeah, faster, right? And, and it's more clean. Yeah. I, I, I'm in that uh, situation right now. Also. Yeah. And, 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 and especially because, if, I mean, if, if you make a mistake, you don't really have to redo the whole thing, you know? Yes, <laughs> I guess. Sometimes, I sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. How do you collect your mood board for your projects? <clears throat> well, <clears throat> I mostly do sequential art. I really don't do it. Much of anything else. I sometimes I do covers, sometimes I do pinups, and sometimes I do character design. But uh, when I do character design, maybe they send me a, a a few pictures of what they of the what they want or something similar. I want it to look like Angelina Jolie. Okay. I want I want this guy to be a Latino and, and to look like this singer or something. I see. So most of the times I ask them for the material. Uh, when the, when they send the material or a good description, I really just look Google some a few things in, and I go from there, you know. I I, it's not like I can collect like a uh, hundred images and then I look at all of them and then decide. No, no, no. I mean, just a, a, a little bit. And, and when I'm doing <clears throat> when I'm doing uh, uh, comic book art, uh, if, if 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 I need a, a specific reference because it, maybe it's a real city, it, mm -hmm. if they say Los Angeles. California. Yes. Well, I just have to Google Los Angeles, you know. Mm -hmm. I guess. And course. I take like a three or four images, and then I use them as as reference. And when it's something that you have to make up, <clears throat> something that's science fiction, well, that I struggle a little bit more uh, with that, especially when it's the first time that I'm doing doing that title. Because it's new stuff, and you have to come up with it, and 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 whatever. And then I go on Google, and and I just, you know, start looking well, at stuff. We also mentioned made like Zinescope. Zinescope had like uh, various creatures that fight the heroines there. So when you redesign this character, do you? have to look to another artist's work or grab what you are told and start to create something from scratch. So what is easier for you? <clears throat> well, it's easier to, to and faster if, if, they, if they already have what you have to draw, you know. However, it's not to say that it's uh, most fun. Sometimes you want to design, or you look at the at the design of that character, and you say, "No, I mean, I, I wish it looked differently. I could do it like this and that, or something that you like." Or, but you're you're not always allowed to do that because 
you cannot have a character in one issue look the one way and then the yeah. next issue have it completely different. There's a leeway, right. you know? Of course, there's like some space for you to do it in your own style, but but you cannot change some of the features. So in Cinescope, <clears throat> uh, at least for the books that I did for them, they had everything, you know? Th those were characters that have all had already appeared previously. So they would just send me uh, the previous books in PDF. The, here it is the, this is the, the character is on page uh, 20 or 24 or, or whatever, and uh, I would just look at it. And sometimes you got you have to build on that because I I did have some some cases in which you only see that character in one panel. And you have to come up with the rest of the <laughs> from here. Ah, ah that's true. Yes, that <laughs> probably happens. something like that. Yeah, and 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 but you you cannot get uh, you you cannot do something different from here down because it have to be it have to have some uh, I don't know the word in congruencia. Uh, uh, to be uh, like, uh, yeah, like, um, how can I say? To make it? sense. To make yeah, sense with the rest of the, yes, of the yes. uh, design. Yes, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's my uh, experience with Cinescope. Mm -hmm. Well, we got another question from the audience here. How difficult has it been to convince a writer to hand you the reins when it comes to drawing, fighting scene? versus them writing the fighting scene? Well, <clears throat> uh, I mean, I get the script and I read it. It's already written. So what I do when I think I can change a scene, uh, either I just do it because I, I have some clients with whom I've been working for some time now and I know I have their trust and I can just do that and then send the page and they're like, everything's okay. And, and even sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't think, I think they're not gonna like it because I had to change a lot of things. And they, I mean, they just accept it. Mm -hmm. However, when I think that I need to talk to them first, I do. Mm. Because you know what? So as often as I can, I do a rough, a rough sketch of the page, mm -hmm. you know? And that's your best defense because you say, hey, I told you. Yeah, that's right, totally agree oh, with yeah. this, this point. Yes. Yeah, it's better to do that. To do, if, if you're not sure, it's better to talk to them first and do a, a rough sketch. Uh, for some clients, I don't do rough sketches because I said, I, I mean, they trust me almost like 100%. And, mm -hmm. uh, but, but, when that is not the case, what I do is that I do a rough, uh, quick rough concept of the page, quick drawing, and if I have to discuss some something, I do it. Like I said, uh, lately I haven't had some trouble. Maybe when I, uh, maybe a few years ago, I'm not gonna say in which break, I did have like a few, you know, like I, this is gonna look better, and they were like, no. But why not? Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't affect your story. It, it doesn't hurt you at all. It, it will just make it look cooler. Yeah, but mm -hmm. no. So, and, and in those cases, you just have to go with it because uh, unless you're like Jim Lee or something like that, you're not going to get away with it. Not, uh -huh. not yes. in the present. Because in the 90s, I, I would believe that, that a writer would have to, you know, step back and say, yeah, I have to let the artists do what whatever the artists want to do because the artists had more, more power back then. But right now, no, you're not gonna get away with it, and you it's it's okay. I mean, it's their story. Now you wanna do whatever you want, you have to write your own comic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So the next question, Marcel. Okay. How long do, does it take uh, for you to finish a comic book page? <clears throat> Usually a day, between, I would say between five and eight hours. 
when I'm lucky four, but it's not like that every day. And also depends on the page, but uh, there are a few cases when I take like an eight, a day and a half and maybe two days when, when something happens, you know, that either you're not really feeling well or there's something that you have to do or that, or the page is really, really complex. And then it, there's no way around it. You have to take your time on it with it. So in those cases, I mean that most would be like two days, but, but it's rare. Most of the time, uh, it's one page a day. And probably between, uh, like I said, five and eight hours. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what do you do when you are bored and got a deadline to catch? <clears throat> when I'm when I'm bored with the work, or when I'm when I'm bored generally. Bored, bored with the character, bored with the script, bored with how, how the events of the comic is going <clears throat> on, well, on, a, on a specific sequence, but you don't like this sequence. I, actually, I think that's a very important thing to to mention when uh, we're talking about art and, and how an, an artist should behave. You have to be professional because I, 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 uh, I mean, I was talking to a friend a few years ago and he was handling like a group of artists. It wasn't comic book art, but he was telling me, you know, they're not getting work done because they're not inspired. Mm. And I was like, what, 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 I mean, they're not Michelangelo or, or, or Da Vinci, you know, you're not being asked to draw the, the Mona Lisa, you're, you're, you're asked to draw advertising work. Yes. So uh, as an artist, you have to have that mentality that, I mean, so it becomes easier with time because I don't think about inspiration. I think that I have to finish a page and uh, that I want to sleep. And I want to have time to eat and probably watch a TV show with my wife. So mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that I'm not putting my heart into the art. I am. But it's not like I'm, oh, I'm going to sit and think of the best page I can do in my whole life because that's not the way to go about it. So mm. <clears throat> I just work. That's it. I just work. If I don't like what I'm doing, I mean, I love my work, but there are times when you see a patient, you're like, I really don't like what's happening here. I wish I yeah. could re rewrite it. I, I just do it. You know, I just think of the better way, way to portray that scene and try to make it exciting for me and for the reader to make it clear, to get good storytelling something visually pleasing maybe and i just do it well, yeah. well it, it happened to me before that i worked with a couple writers and i i went to a point that <clears throat> i i got really bored with how the events are rolling in the book so i was kind of afraid to tell them that the book you were written is so boring it to look myself <laughs> <laughs> and that's another <laughs> thing you cannot do that because I mean, and, and, yeah. and there, there are happy times when I mean, because sometimes a book is good or, or is fun or whatever, but there are uh, like a few pages that are like, you know, so I've had that talk with, with an editor and, and with, a write, with a writer when I say, you know, visually, this is not really appealing. And I tell them, you know, as an artist, you know, I have to choose a different camera angle because especially when it's a, 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 a page where when they are just talking. Oh, oh that's, it, yes. Yeah, you have to make it. The most boring, yes. Exactly. You, might, you have to make it interesting. And, and yeah. I have a, like a, a couple of times with, when the writer goes, why, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this and then that? And they're just talking, exactly. They're just talking. They're going to bore the, the, the reader. And you don't want that. You want the reader to want to look at your book. 
yeah, but they're gonna read it. Yeah, but this is not like a book. This is a comic book. It, it has to have something visually a, a, a appealing to readers. And then uh, fortunately, again, uh, most of the cases they're like, okay, go with it. And, 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 and I just do it. <clears throat> oh, that's awesome. And so hopeful. <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> So we are going to head to the last question, which I'm going to give it to you, Marcelo. Okay, that's me. Okay, so there's any tips or, or tricks that you want to share to the audience regarding art? <clears throat> regarding art, well, I would say, and, and, and what I get asked a lot of times is that uh, how to get better or how to get work that's like the questions that i get most often and i would say uh when when artists are are starting out sometimes they uh like uh, i don't know the word again because it you know uh, you get desperate yes yeah they, i mean they want to get work right away and it's not like that if you yeah. look at any other profession i mean the doctors weren't didn't go into the operating room because they wanted to operate first they learned yeah and that's a problem that we have as, as artists and i it's, it's something that i've been through also i think you have to be more patient you have to wait to you don't have to think i have to get a job like the next month or in a year you have to learn yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you'll get work. And how do you get better? You have to study. Even yes. if you don't go to a school, you have to study and, and be very serious about it and be very methodic about it. Because the yeah. problem that we have as, as artists is like, I don't want to spend like five hours doing hands. I just, I want to draw a spawn. Or Superman, <laughs> you know, or, or the Hulk, but, yeah, being, yes. being, being the Hulk, destroying things. And man, and you're not gonna do a very good Superman or Hulk or Spawn unless you yeah. spend those five hours drawing hands first. I agree. A lot of a lot of times for a long time, yeah. you know. And that's Probably. something that I, I mean. And 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 if you don't do it, I mean, if you're starting out and you don't do it now. Is gonna get to you later. Yeah, Pay true. attention to this phrase, guys. You have to train yourself and practice every day to you, so you can be able to draw your favorite superhero. Exactly. Superhero officially. This is approved from our artists here, Ariel and Marcelo too. Yeah, so, I completely agree with this. We finished all our questions. We really love talking to you, Ariel, about all those questions, all Thank those you. tips and tricks. We, well, guys, we'll be sharing links and uh, about the social media for Ariel and his new to, new YouTube channel, uh, so you can subscribe. Uh, Thank you. We do enjoy your work, so please complete to inspire us, Ariel. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Thank you. I will try to. Oh, oh many thanks again, man. Thank you, amazing, guys. Man. Yeah, oh, it, it was great talking to you. Yeah, well, hope to thanks. see you again. Yeah. Many thanks again, guys, for watching. Looking for our next week interview. And goodbye.